Who's the, well, I mean, we probably already said it there, but who's the very tallest person you've ever seen up close and personal? Well, probably Andre. Because you just, you know, I'm not that tall anyway, but, you know, you just look up. I've been in a few matches with Andre, and I'd heard stories about him that he don't like to be ribbed or whatever. And a lot of guys, since they talked to him in the dressing room, thought they were friends and they would get cute in the ring with him. <clears throat> I did see him hit this one guy one time, just an open hand chop. He knocked him completely through the second and third rope, and he never touched anything. I thought he'd killed him. I mean, he chopped the living shit out of this guy. And you could, uh, you, you could almost hear whoosh, you could almost hear the air from his hand, just sucking the air out of the room when he hit the guy. And he hits you in the chest, which is a hard enough blow to take easy, let alone 400 pounds behind it. That's the last time. See, when Andre used to go to territories, they would put him in like a battle royal every night. Sort of, he, he could have a match, but you didn't want to really put him against one of your guys because unless the guy had a lot of heat on him, uh, they were just waiting for Andre to beat the guy. But in the battle royals, you know, you could see him up up to 10 minutes and then he'd go out and walk around the crowd. That's what the people were, wanted to see. And he used to be booked like the NWA champion. I don't know who booked him. But the NWA office used to book Flair and Funk and uh, both Funks, the Briscoes. They would handle the bookings for the NWA champion out of the St. Louis office. I don't know who handled Andre's bookings, but uh, I do know that the NWA champion, you could get him up to five times a year. And they would actually pick the dates for you to have him. You wouldn't send them dates. I'll take him here, here, and here. They would send you the dates that you have him. And you were obligated to book him. And I don't know how they paid the champion. I think he got 10% of the, of the gross. I mean, 10% uh, of the house, which the house may sell out. And the talent can make less money on a sellout than they would make on a normal house. I've done that because they pay the champion so much. So if you got, say, $10,000 to pay talent, well, if he's taking 30%, he's taking 3000 of that. And where you would normally get $500, $600, $700, you might get 350 And I'm thinking, why in the hell bring the champion in? He's not helping me, but he was helping the office. So that's why they would do it. Was that the same with Andre as well? Would he take 10% or whatever? Was it the, did he I have think the same he percentage? I think he was. And I think the NWA... NWA office. Once he made it to the States, I don't think they booked him because he more or less broke in under Vince, didn't he? Or no? Andre. Um, no, I think he broke in. No, Canada, he couldn't so Montreal. have. In fact, I think he was in the UK. He broke in the UK uh, before he came to America. Andre did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know who booked him. I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have I think to it check was Vince that Senior. out. Vince Senior, I think the WWWF office was booking Andre out. And then maybe around 83 or whenever, uh, Vince decided to take Andre back and not let him go anywhere else. Okay, well, things like that. I was learning the business then. Those, those things like that, I didn't worry about. That was their business. And one reason I lasted so long in the business I didn't, I didn't involve myself in a lot of other things that didn't involve me. You know that I was saying, stay in your lane. I stayed in my lane and avoided a lot of stuff. Of course, that meant all that gossip you hear about in the dressing rooms. You know, I just stayed in my lane. I just heard it and kept going. I never brought it up to anybody or it, it, it didn't concern me. So if it didn't concern me, that's their business. I let it go with that. What did that guy do to Andre to warrant getting chopped through the ring in that battle royal? Do you remember? I can't. I think he pissed him on the butt or something. He didn't like it. Andre was very temperamental at times. I mean, sometimes he'd be in a bad mood. 
And I can see why driving in these cars, you know, he couldn't get comfortable in the cars. He was on the road all the time. He was probably tired. And the guy got cute with him in the ring or something, and Andre just knocked the crap out of him. And that served notice to everybody in that ring. Hey, don't get too cute because I'll halfway kill you. You know, you act differently around. <laughs> you act differently around people that you think can kill you <laughs> with one punch. So, but I guarantee you, the guy never, ever messed with Andre again. So he fixed that problem. 